welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're making a really cool, unique bag. It's a bag. Today, we are making the Ellie. I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Eli. A laptop case, and this comes to us from Lynn's Handmade. Now, let me just show you how adorable this laptop case is. It is simple. It is just for your laptop. Do you want to add a pocket on the back? You probably could, but today we're just going to go through the pattern as is. So this is what it looks like. This is a great, great pattern for anybody in your life who has a laptop. It is so cool. I got to be honest, when I got done making this, my kids all freaked out and they've all asked me to make them a laptop case just like this. I was kind of surprised how much they love this, but you can see this is just one big piece of fabric right here. We have a vinyl accent on top and then just a little webbing strap right here. And then we have a zipper that goes all the way around. Now that's really cool, right? I mean, it's a cool way to hold the laptop, but it doesn't just hold your laptop and then, you know, you take your laptop out to use it. You actually dar, 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 use your laptop in this case. So you can see we have a couple pieces of elastic up top by the screen and then we have some little corner pieces right here around the bottom. So this is neat. It's not just to like protect your laptop. You can just leave it on. I love stuff like this because it's nice and it's poofy. We are going to be using foam to protect our laptop today. I love this because what I can do is I can just take this and I can put this in like my duffel bag or I can take this and I can put this in my messenger bag. I can put this in a bigger bag and I know that this is nice and protected. So when I'm throwing my keys in there or my phone or anything else, I'm not going to damage my laptop. And then I don't have to like take the laptop out and then find a place to put this sleeve, put it away. I can just leave my laptop in the sleeve. I love that. So in today's tutorial, I was sent some incredible fabric that I want to talk to you guys about. I am working with St. Jude and Joann's to help raise money for their creative season. They sent over a couple yards of fabric that was actually designed by a patient at St. Jude. And I want to show you his artwork. This is the Fever Fighter, and this was designed by Ethan at St. Jude. He is a patient there. I absolutely love this little guy. Look at this. Look how stinking cute he is. So what they did was they actually took his image and then they printed it all over this amazing fabric. Look how fun this is. So in today's tutorial, we will be making a larger laptop case using this fabric. I am so excited. If you find it in your heart that you can donate to St. Jude to help these kiddos, I will have a link down below where you can do that. Please, please consider donating. As we go through the video today, I will be sharing little tips and facts about St. Jude as well as how your money helps these kids, okay? It, from $1 to $1,000, there are so many ways we can help these kiddos. So if you can donate, please find it in your heart to do so. If you can't, that is perfectly fine. If you can share the video, share the campaign, that would mean so, so much to everybody. So I just wanna tell you, this pattern is not a one size pattern, which is what I'm saying is if your laptop is not this size, that doesn't mean you can't make this laptop case. This is really cool. We're gonna learn a lot today in this tutorial. This is a really, really cool pattern. So the pattern is actually written for you to kind of draft it yourself. You're gonna have the pieces you need, but you're gonna put them together for your laptop size. It's very, very cool. So I am going to walk you through how to actually use the pattern pieces to come up with your own very specific pattern for your laptop and how you can change that around. And then we will go through the entire tutorial. There's a lot of really cool new things that I've never done. I, it was a really good one. So I think that we're all going to really strengthen our bag making skill set today. It is not a challenging make. However, we are working with some vinyl. We are working with some webbing and we are working with some curves. So if these are all brand new to you. You might want to start with a more beginner project with a little bit, you know, lighter curves, not such severe, you know, 90 degree angles. But if you've worked with zippers in the past, maybe you've worked with a small curve or two, I think you're ready for this. You can do this. This is a fun one. So thank you so much to Lens from Lens Handmade for allowing me to use your pattern in my tutorial. You guys, Lens has some of the most popular patterns out there. Like every single time she comes out with a new pattern, everybody's making it. It's just like all you see on social media. I absolutely love that. Don't forget that Lynn's has her own tutorials for all of her own patterns and they are free. She has her own YouTube channel. As soon as she puts a pattern out, she has a video to go with it. So if you want to see how the actual designer 
does this laptop case, please make sure you check out her channel. I will have it linked down below as well as right around here somewhere. Also, thank you so, so much to St. Jude and Joanne's for allowing me to be a part of this campaign. I just cannot tell you how much it means to me to be able to raise money for these kiddos. It's bigger than a bag. You know what I mean? Every now and then we get to do a really special video where it is, it's bigger than a bag. And, and I hope that you guys love the tutorial and I hope that you guys find it in your heart to support St. Jude in any way you can. So if you're new to the Oak Roots YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shoutouts, anything at all you want to say, leave it down in the comments section. There will be timestamps for every single part of this tutorial. They will be running right along the bottom of the screen. You can also click the arrow down here to expand the description and then all those timestamps will be listed right there as well as links to everything. Links to the campaign, links to the products used, links to the pattern. Everything will be listed right there in the description of this video. All right guys, let's get started. Okay, so the amount of material you're gonna use today really depends on the size of your laptop. You might need as little as a half a yard or as much as a yard. So if you have a bigger laptop, get a yard of fabric. If you have a smaller laptop, half a yard might be okay. If you love the fabric, get a yard of fabric. You won't regret that. But I'm going to be using about a yard of exterior fabric and then a yard of lining fabric. I am using quilt weight cotton today. This is the amazing Fever Fighter design from Ethan at St. Jude. This is with Joann's. Joann's has a lot of options from patients at St. Jude. So I highly encourage you to go check it out. I'll have a link down below. This fabric here actually came from a subscription box, but I do believe they sell this fabric. So this is from Sew Your Bag, and I will have a link for this site as well down below. Then you're gonna need a piece of material for the top accent. Now this should be vinyl cork, something a little bit more durable because we're gonna be putting a handle on it. So I wouldn't suggest quilt cotton here. You're gonna need between 12 and 24 inches of this. So let's talk interfacing. So if you're using a lot of quilt weight cotton like I am, you're gonna need a lot of lighter interfacing. So it can be Pellon SF 101. This is actually so fuse. It's just a lighter interfacing that's going to prevent the material from stretching or from fraying. So you're gonna need about two yards of that. If you're using a cork or a vinyl exterior, then maybe just one yard, just wherever you have quilt weight cotton, you gotta use this interfacing. And then you're gonna need a yard of Pellon Flex Foam that is fusible. So this is that fusible foam. Now this is not Pellon Flex Foam. This is soft and stable from Biani because this is the only foam that I have but it's not fusible and we actually really want it to be. So to help with that, I have some heat and bond. Now this is heat and bond light and pretty much what it is, it's a double sided adhesive. So I'm gonna iron this onto my soft and stable cut and then I'm going to iron that onto the fabric. I'll show you how I use this, but if you don't have fusible foam, but you have the soft and stable, you just want some sort of a permanent adhesive. So maybe it's even a spray glue, just some way to stick the fabric to the foam. All right, next up is some webbing. We're gonna want one inch webbing anywhere between 12 inches to 24 inches. So you're just gonna want a good amount of webbing. Now this is seat belt webbing. I love it. I'll have a link down below. It's a really easy way to add a handle to the top of this. And then you're gonna want some zipper tape. Now you're gonna want between one and one and a half yards of zipper tape. This is a long zipper, even for a small laptop. This is a long zipper and the length of it is going to depend on the sides of your laptop. We're doing math today, guys, so I will walk you through this, but it is a number five zipper tape, and then you're gonna need a zipper pull. This is a fun like little gaming pull. I thought that would be cute with the fabric today. You're also gonna want some elastic. Now this is like a velvet elastic. Any kind of elastic will do here, but you're going to want about at least 10 inches of it. This is going to hold the screen on the top of the laptop case. All right, here's all the other stuff. As you can see, I have lots of tape here. I've got three different types of tape. This is half of an inch double-sided tape and quarter inch double-sided tape. These two here are meant for leather. They are very sticky and they can gum up your needle. So preferably we use these when we know we're not gonna be sewing over it. I also have some wash away double-sided tape. However, some of the things we're using the tape for today is to hold thin pieces of vinyl in place. And this is not always strong enough to do that. And then I have a one inch by six inch ruler as always. My thread today is this Tex 35 weight thread. You could also use the Mara 70 weight thread, which is perfect. For my bobbin thread, I have a Guterman just from Joann's. And then I have my Schmetz 8012 needles. I have some tape here because we are gonna be building our pattern pieces and I wanna show you how to do that. A healthy supply of clips as always. Lots of marking tools, air erasing, chalk, vinyl. You gotta make sure you can mark on everything today. A glue stick, a lighter. This is my favorite turning tool. A stiletto for helping with the zipper. This is really gonna help with the curves. 
some small scissors, and some fabric scissors. These are all the tools I'll be using today. So before I show you my pattern pieces, let's talk about how to build your pattern pieces. Now this is what you're gonna print out. You're gonna have another sheet as well that has a little corner piece for later, but this is the main part I wanna talk about. You're gonna have four pieces of paper that look just like this. Don't tape them together unless this is the size of your laptop. You're gonna notice there are little corner placements on the bottom and also on the top up here. You have corner placements. So let me grab my laptop. I'm using a bigger laptop today than the one I previously made. So to get started, what I do is I start with the bottom left one. I'm just gonna move these other ones out of the way. And I'm gonna take my laptop and this bottom left corner of my laptop, I'm gonna line it up right here with this bottom left corner placement, just like that. I'm gonna do my best to get everything as straight as possible. So once I have one corner done, what I actually do is I just kind of lift up the right side of my laptop and then I'm gonna take my other pattern piece and just slide it right in. Now, you can draw down here on these lines so you can extend them all the way off the page to make it easier to line up. I actually find that I can see through the paper and see the line underneath. So what I do is I pick this up and I slide this corner down here, this bottom right corner, to the bottom right corner of my laptop first, just like that, and then I start trying to line up these edges down here because you want everything straight, right? There we go. So I'm actually looking through the paper so I can see the other line, making sure this corner lines up, this corner lines up. Okay, now that I have these two here, I'm leaving everything in place. Now I'm gonna take the top left corner. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I, I hold my arm down on my laptop and then I just lift it up from the back like that. And I'm gonna slide this in and I'm going to get this top left corner of my laptop to line up with the top left corner that's up here. And then once again, I'm looking through my paper. I can see through the paper. I can see the line underneath and lining this up over here. Last, I'm gonna do the same thing with my top right. And I'm just gonna lift up my laptop and slide this in. Looking through my paper to line up the lines on the top and also over here on the right side. And then also making sure the corner lines up over here. All right, so now I have this placed right at those four corner marks. I'm gonna grab a piece of tape and just kind of tape it. So I'm gonna gently lift up my laptop and here's what I do first. I'm gonna take one piece of tape and I'm just gonna kind of tape in the four corner spot right here where they all kind of come together. I don't wanna actually tape everything together perfectly because I'm going to double check this. So I'm gonna take my laptop and I'm gonna grab a roller and I'm gonna measure the width of my laptop, which is 16 and a quarter inches. And then the height of my laptop, which is 14 and three quarters of an inch. All right, so 16 and one quarter by 14 and three quarters inch. You guys, we're doing math today. Just write it down, you'll be fine. So then what I do is I take my ruler and I'm gonna measure from these corners and make sure it's the same. If it's not, I'm going to remove this tape and readjust this. Now, you could just do that from the beginning. You don't even have to kind of take your laptop and place it on there if you don't want to. Whichever way is easier for you. If measuring your laptop and then just using a ruler to measure distance to distance on all of these is easier for you, then do that. But you want this to line up properly because you want your laptop to fit. You don't want it to be too small. You don't want it to be too big. I know it's very precise. Just take your time with the pattern pieces. Once you have this so that it's exactly the way you need it, then you're gonna cut everything out. Then you're gonna cut out this long strip up here, which is your spine accent. And then you're gonna cut out the rest of your pattern piece, okay? And then we're gonna move on to the next step. If you notice down here on the number three pattern piece, it does have you write down the width and the height. That way you can reuse this because for me, I know I have multiple size laptops, so I would make one for every single size, store it away, so whenever I wanna make a case, I know which one to grab. So you can see when you cut out your pattern piece, you cut this out on the fold. And I got a big laptop, so I've got a big pattern pieces. So this is my lining cut right here. The lining cut is interfaced with my SF-101 or my Sofuse in my case. And then I also have my exterior cut, same size. And this is also interfaced with the woven interfacing. Next up is my spine cut. And remember the pattern piece for the spine cut is also dependent on the size of your laptop. So just make sure you line up those pattern pieces really well. And then for my final exterior cut, I have a little piece here. This is a corner anchor. This is going to hold the bottom of the laptop in place by your keyboard. You can also use this if you decide you don't wanna use the pattern pieces and instead you wanna draft out your own pattern pieces or just cut it on your fabric. You wanna round the corners. So if you're gonna just cut a big rectangle, the pattern gives you instructions on all the math to do that. You can cut your big rectangle out of your material, but you do wanna round the corners. So you can use this on the bottom of your corners to help round them out. 
I forgot to mention this in the beginning, but you're also gonna need a half to three quarters of a yard of fusible fleece. So here are all my extra cuts. I have a cut of foam. Let me see if I can get in the shot like that. And then I have a cut of fusible fleece. And then I have my cut of heat and bond. These are all smaller than the original pattern. So you're gonna sketch out the original pattern and then you're gonna subtract a half of an inch from each of the four sides. So these are all a half of an inch shorter on every single edge than the original pattern piece. This is because we don't want bulk in our seam. We're gonna have a zipper around the whole thing. We don't wanna have to sew the foam and the fusible fleece to a zipper. So we trim this down. So when we fuse this, we're gonna fuse this fusible fleece centered on the exterior and we're actually gonna fuse the foam to the lining. We'll go through that. Okay, so let's first cut our zipper tape and our webbing. We got math, okay? There is a cut list, you can print that off and you can do all your math. For the first three items in the cut list, that's only if you're not using the pattern pieces. Like I said, you can just measure this out and create your own rectangle and then round the corners if you want. The measurements are there. But for the zipper tape, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the laptop width which is 16 and a quarter inches. And we're gonna add one and a half inches to that. And then we're going to take the laptop height, which is 14 and three quarters of an inch. And we're gonna multiply that by two. And we're gonna add that to the number we already have. Okay, I'll have it on the screen helping you guys out. And then after we do that, we're gonna add four and a half inches to that. And that is going to be the length of our zipper tape. So for me, my zipper tape needs to be 51 and three quarters of an inch. That's a pretty long zipper tape, but that is because I have a larger laptop. So I'm gonna measure this out and cut my zipper tape. Now I've got my zipper tape cut, and let me just tell you, it doesn't have to be super precise. We're not going end to end here. The zipper tape is gonna be longer than we really need it to be, but we do need it longer. So if, you're kind of struggling with measuring out your zipper tape, measure it out a little bit longer than you think you need it, okay? So for your webbing, your webbing is one inch wide, and for the length, you're going to measure the width of your laptop, which for us is 16 and one quarter, and then you're gonna add one and a half inches to that. So that's easy math. All right, so now I have my zipper tape and my webbing cut and ready to go. So let's first talk about fusing the foam to the lining, okay? Like I said, I don't have fusible foam, so we're getting a little bit more creative. Let's actually start with the foam. So I'm gonna take my foam piece and lay it up. You know, my, my mat is a little small for this. Then I'm gonna take my heat and bond, and I have a paper side to my heat and bond, and then I have like a rough sandpaper side. That sandpaper side is the glue. I'm gonna have the glue go against the foam. And you'll notice it just kind of, because it is like sandpaper, it just kind of sticks to it without even heat but I'm gonna lay it out so that it's on the foam. It's okay if it's a little big or a little small. This is just glue for us. Now, when we adhere the heat and bond, we don't want any steam and we want a medium heat. So it doesn't take much and you don't have to do it for long. We're not trying to like really fuse it on. We just want the glue to stick to the foam. And you can see I'm going right over the paper. It has a bit of a smell, so don't do this for too long. There we go. And I'll go over this again once I'm heating it up to the fabric. So I'm not terribly concerned about it being absolutely perfect. I just want it to stick. So I'm just gonna go over the whole paper. There we go. And make sure you get all the edges really well. All right, great. Once you have that adhered, all you have to do now is peel off the paper. And you can see there's like a shininess to our foam now. That's the glue. And we're taking it off the paper. So now before we fuse this, let's get this centered. So take your lining panel. Now this goes on the lining panel because this is what's gonna be closest to the laptop. Take your lining panel and lay it wrong side up. Take your foam, and remember the foam is smaller, so center it. Just center it as best you can. You can definitely measure it with a ruler if you'd like. There we go, it's centered. Now ideally you'd be doing this at your ironing board, but since I have a pressing mat, I'm gonna take my pressing mat out and carefully, I'm going to flip this over without moving the foam in the material around. There we go. And now I'm going to fuse it from the right side of the fabric. So now I'm trying to access that glue that's on the foam and get it stuck to my material. And remember, my lining fabric already has the woven interfacing on it, so I shouldn't have to worry about the lining material wrinkling or stretching or anything like that. That woven interfacing should be helping you right now. 
Again, I'm not using any steam. You're just gonna go in patches here. Just gonna slowly fuse your material to that foam. And if you have a heat press, that's gonna be much easier here. A heat press is going to fuse this perfectly. So I do have a heat press, but I'm not using it today. But if you are making a lot of these and you have a heat press and you're doing this method with the foam, um, I would suggest you just do that because it would be about 30 seconds for each one of these. It'd be very fast. All right, once you've got that fused on, let it cool because if you try to pull up the corners while it's hot, they're gonna pull up very easily. But once they cool down, they don't pull up at all. So let this cool down. Next up, we're gonna do the exterior and the fusible fleece. The exterior needs to be wrong side up. And once again, we wanna center our fusible fleece, glue side down, so there's like a rough side, that's the glue side. Glue side down and just center it over the back. Remember, your fusible fleece is shorter than your exterior piece. All right, once that's there, I'm gonna get my pressing mat back up and I'm gonna gently flip the whole thing over without it shifting around on me, there we go. And now fusible fleece likes really high heat and a lot of steam and you don't wanna hold your iron in one place for too long. So you wanna keep it moving. You'll notice if you keep it in one place for too long, the fabric is going to start to wrinkle up and look like a like an old grape. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna look like a raisin. It starts to shrivel up and you don't want that. So you keep it moving and pushing around. Your fabric should not be stretching. Since you have that woven interfacing already on your material, your fabric should not be stretching at all. If you're using cork or vinyl or something more durable for your exterior, you do not need to add the fusible fleece. The fusible fleece is really just to beef up quilt cotton. Now, I'll be honest, I find fusible fleece likes to come up at the corners no matter how much you steam it. The only time fusible fleece has worked really well for me is when I use it with a heat press. All right, once you have the fusible fleece adhered to your exterior, go ahead and set this to the side. So let's work with the spine accent. You're gonna flip your spine accent so it's wrong side up. You're gonna grab a ruler and a marking tool and you're gonna measure in half of an inch along both long edges, marking that with your marking tool on the back. Now I'm gonna take my super sticky double-sided tape for this because this vinyl, if I use my Dritz wash away, it's not gonna hold it, it's just gonna flip right back up. So I do have to use the really sticky stuff to hold this in place. And I'm just lining up my tape right along the edge of my marked line. I'm, I'm putting it closer towards the raw edge of the vinyl. And I'm gonna do this on both sides. And then you can remove the paper from the tape and fold up that raw edge to meet that marked line. Okay, so you can see that I am using clips because it is such a skinny seam and my vinyl is so thick that it does not want to stay. What we wanna do before we move on too fast is we want to find the midpoints on a lot of our panels. So I'm just going to fold the short edge of this accent piece in half and make a clip to find the midpoint along the short edges. Let's do this on both sides. Go ahead and grab your lining and your exterior and do the same thing. So let's just fold them. We wanna find the midpoints on all four edges. So just fold them in half, line up those corners, and pull on it a little bit and find your midpoint. And I'm just using scissors here to cut very tiny little triangles. And that's gonna help me find my midpoints. So I'm gonna do this for all four edges of my lining and my exterior. So take your exterior piece and lay it right side up and then grab your accent. And you're gonna lay it right side up on top of it and centered. So we're gonna use these center marks on our accent piece and the center mark on the side of our material. Now, we're only going to line up the edge on the right side. On the left side, you're going to have overhang, which is what we want. So to have this stick in place, this is gonna be a little tricky with this material, I gotta be honest, because this material does not wanna stay down. I'm gonna grab my half inch double-sided tape and I'm going to add it down the center of my strip here. And what we wanna do, let me see if I can turn this around a little bit so you can see it better. And what we wanna do is we wanna lay this spine down completely centered on our exterior panel, which can be a little tricky to do. I mean, we have the midpoint on one side we can use to help us, but then on the other side, we have a little bit of an overhang. So I'm gonna remove the paper from the tape and I'm gonna stick this down. And I just kinda lightly have this on here. It's not pushed down yet. I'm gonna grab a ruler and make sure I have the same amount of distance on both sides because we really need this to be centered. Okay, once you know it's centered, go ahead and push it down so that the tape will hold it in place. 
All right, it's gonna be a little challenging because of the vinyl I chose. You should go with the cork if you're doing this for the first time. Cork is much easier to work with than this vinyl. All right, over here on the left side, you should have an overhang of three quarters of an inch. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this over and look at the wrong side. So by flipping this over, I now have my overhang on the right side, okay? And I'm gonna measure in one inch from the raw edge of my exterior panel. I'm just gonna mark a line like that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap around this overhang to meet that one inch mark. And when you do that, you are going to be pinching that exterior material, that's what we want. So we wrap it around to meet the one inch mark, folding back that exterior material and pinching it and then grab some clips to hold it in place. There we go. So if we flip this back over, then that overlap over here is on the left side and you can see the material is pinched right there, which is exactly what we want. Over here on the right side, it's raw edge of vinyl and raw edge of exterior. All right, so now we're gonna take this to the machine and we're going to top stitch these long edges down to the exterior panel. I'm going to have to be working with this at the machine since it is not staying folded under. This material is also very, very sticky, so I will be putting some of this tape on the bottom of my presser foot. And then we're also going to top stitch right along this folded edge here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So around the whole thing at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You don't have to stitch over here on the raw edge though. That vinyl was a little challenging, but we did it. And honestly, the vinyl does look really cool, doesn't it? That's why I picked it, because it looks so good with this. All right, let's set this to the side. Next, you're gonna grab your corner anchor and you're going to just cut it in half from sharp corner to sharp corner. So not rounded corner to round corner. Just grab a ruler and just slice it down with your rotary cutter. Once you have these sliced in two, let's work on the back side of them. You're going to measure in one inch from each of the straight edges, and you're gonna mark a line on the back of the material. And now here you can grab a glue stick, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna glue right underneath that marked line, just like that. And then we're gonna fold the raw edge, wrong sides up to meet the marked line and just glue it down. And with glue, if you wanna press this with an iron, that will help it set really fast, but you can also just kind of finger press it. Sometimes I'll stick this under a ruler something a little bit heavier, something like that, just while the, the glue will dry very quickly, so it doesn't take long. We're gonna do this for both pieces. We're just gluing the long straight edges, wrong sides together to that line. All right, so now I'm going to top stitch along these folded edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, and then, and then I'll cut these down. So you can cut these down first or after, but we're just gonna top stitch right along these folded edges. So once you have those top stitched down, now I'm going to trim down the little dog ears, that's what they're called usually is dog ears. So we're gonna trim those off. And now our little connectors are ready to go. So now grab your lining material and lay it right side up, isn't that fun? I know it's too big for the camera shot, so I'm just gonna have to do one side at a time. Let's start with the bottom edge. We're gonna take our little anchors and we're going to put them along the bottom edge just like that. So they should line up perfectly. Just make sure they're not, you know, too rounded. If it's all off, then obviously that's not where it goes. Get it lined up perfectly down here and then clip in place. So now we're just gonna base this in place. So I'm just pretty much using, again, a 3.5 millimeter top stitching stitch length and I'm doing it an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just holding these corner anchors in place. All right, doesn't that look cool? I love that. I love having a little pop down here too. Like that's why I like to use the exterior material. So now we need to provide the elastic corners up here on the top. So first what you wanna do is you wanna measure three inches in from the corner on the top on each side. Okay, it can be a little bit hard to see, but I have my marks. And when you're marking, since there's no actual corner here, what I do is I line up my ruler on the straight edge here and then measure three inches in from there. But with a big enough ruler, you can get right along the edge. So I haven't trimmed down my elastic yet. Probably could iron it, honestly but I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this. And what you wanna do is you want the center of the elastic to cover both of these points. So I'm just eyeballing it real quick. And then I'll grab 
scissors and, and obviously it's longer than it needs to be, but that's okay. So I just gave my elastic a quick press to flatten it out because it was a little wild. And what we want to do now is we just want to take it and the elastic is going to go from one corner covering that mark up to the other mark that you made and just centered right over it. Doesn't have to be precise, just has to go diagonally across those marks. Do the same thing on the other side. All right, once you have them clipped in place, now let's take them to the machine and just baste down the edges of these elastic strips. Once you have those straps basted on, you can just trim down the excess. Okay, so remember how we marked the midpoints on all of corners of our lining and exterior? We're gonna use that midpoint now on the left-hand side. So the lining is right side up. We're looking at the left-hand side where our midpoint is, and we're gonna mark three quarters of an inch up and three quarters of an inch down right along the edge from that midpoint mark. So we're making a one and a half inch mark right here, okay? So now let's flip this over and you might want to transfer those marks that you just made to the back. So what I do is I just flip it up and find it on the front and then just mark it on the back. And now you're going to want to measure in a half of an inch and that should be really right along the edge of your foam. So when I measure this in, it is half of an inch is right along the edge of the foam. I'm going to grab a small piece of wash away double sided tape. And I want it to be one and a half inches. So I'm just going to make sure it's not bigger than that. So I'm just measuring this double sided piece to be one and a half inches long. And I'm going to put it right along the raw edge in between my marks. Just like that. Give it a good press to get the tape to stick and then pull up the paper. And then after you have the paper pulled up between those two marks, you're just going to fold it back a quarter of an inch. So just right up to the edge of that foam. You should see your marks on the front as well. There we go. I know this is a little finagly, uh, but we're doing this for a reason. So once you have it folded up, you might notice that your marks, you can't see them on the front anymore and you do want to still see them on the front. So I added a couple clips just outside of my marks and then on the opposite end, on the right side, I marked those same one and a half inch marks okay now what we want to do is we want to take this to the sewing machine and we want to top stitch from the first mark all the way down to the second mark lynn suggests not back stitching so that you can leave long tails and pull them to the back and tie them if you feel comfortable doing that that's great if not back stitching is also going to work i will pull the tails through the back to show you how to do that but i'm going to start at the first mark and i'm just going to stitch right along the edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way to the second mark and i'm stitching that fold over to the back okay Everything else is still raw. I just had this one little bit here I'm working on. Okay, so you can see I have these tails hanging off. I'm gonna flip this over so I can look at the back side. I'm gonna take my bobbin tail and I'm just gonna pull it up gently. And then I'm gonna grab a stiletto and I'm gonna pull the gold top thread to the back. So when you pull on your bobbin tail, you'll have a little loop from your top thread and you can just pull that to the back nice and gentle. Here we go. And then all you have to do is tie this in like a triple knot. That's what I do. Just tie it three times and that will secure it in place. Do this for both ends. And then all you have to do is trim those threads. And if you want to keep it looking really clean because you have those little tiny threads from where you trimmed it, you can burn them. Whoop, just very carefully. You don't need to start a fire. There we go. Okay, so now the lining is prepped and we've got this side tucked in. We're all good to go. Real quick before we get started, I am going to add my bag tag. So here's the tag I'm using today. I'm going to grab a small cut of double-sided tape to hold it in place. And you can put your bag tags wherever you want. You can center it on the panel. You can put it up towards the corner. You can put it up here. I mean, probably not there. You're going to have a handle there. Uh, I like it centered and just about an inch or so down from the spine. So what I need to do is find that midpoint real quick. So I'm just going to fold the whole unit in half right along the spine and then pinch and then grab an air erasing marker and just mark right there where that midpoint is. There we go. And then I can grab one of my small rulers, can line it up with that mark, put the tape on the back of my tag and then just line this up with the ruler 
And there we go. Now my tag is pretty straight. It's pretty straight. Okay, I'm just gonna top stitch real quick right around the edges of my bag tag. So with this orientation, it looks like my bag tag is probably gonna be on the back. So if you want your tag to be on the front, just remember when you have the folded edge on the left, the tag needs to go below the spine. So in this way, because this is how it's gonna be in the end. And then this will be the top of the laptop. I know it's a little difficult, but if you want your tag or special design to be on the front, it needs to be down here with this folded edge over here on the left. So now on the right side here with the raw edge of the spine, we're gonna measure a quarter inch down from the folded edge on the top and the bottom. Now grab your zipper tape and make sure you put your zipper pull on your zipper tape. Okay, and let's go ahead and pull our zipper close to the end, but not all the way off the end, just like that. There we go. So now this end over here, this is gonna be the open end, okay? Whenever the zipper opens up, this end will be open. So from that open end, you're gonna to wanna to measure down one inch and mark a line on the back of your zipper tape. So just grab your ruler, measure down one inch, and mark a line. So the pattern now suggests you take your double-sided tape and lay down double-sided tape along the entire bottom edge here. I find I struggle a lot with this double-sided tape, so I am not gonna be using it. I prefer clips, but if you're more comfortable using tape, then definitely use tape here. It will prevent the zipper tape from shifting too much versus clips, it, the zipper tape can shift. Just side note for that. So now with your zipper tape, separate the open edge just like that. So we have that one inch mark right here. We're gonna line up that mark on the back of our zipper tape. So our zipper tape is right side down. And we're gonna line up that mark with that little mark we made right here on our spine. So remember we measured a quarter inch up from the spine. We're gonna line up those marks together. We're gonna grab our clips or use tape here if you prefer. And we're just going to push those together. Now what we're gonna do, you're gonna find it's easier if you keep unzipping your zipper tape a good suggestion is on the very end of your zipper tape. Go ahead and add a clip there so the zipper doesn't come off. Or you can sew down the end of this closed side of your zipper tape so that the zipper pull doesn't come off. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go around this bottom half of our laptop case and we're clipping or taping the zipper tape right sides together with the exterior. Now, once you get to these corners over here, you might need some help with the scissors. So, since this is a pretty strong corner, you might wanna make a couple of little clips. So no more than an eighth of an inch. I make three or four right along the raw edge of my zipper tape. And then when I go around these corners, it's really easy to spread out the zipper tape so that I don't have to worry about fighting with it. Once again, double-sided tape here might be easier for you. So just keep going around this bottom edge, clipping your zipper, to your exterior panel. Once I come up to the other corner, I'm gonna do the same thing once again. I'm just gonna clip into the zipper tape. Just three or four clips, about an eighth of an inch in. And then when I bend that zipper tape, it doesn't fight me so much. So once you get up to the other end of the spine, just clip it until you get to the folded edge. So once you get to the edge of your spine material, just like that. Now you might find this easiest, especially around the corners, if you take a ruler and you measure a quarter of an inch away from the edge and you just sew right over that line. Because especially on the corners, we have a tendency to increase our seam allowance. If you're comfortable at your machine with your zipper foot and you can keep the seam allowance consistent, then go ahead and do that. That's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna use the help of a stiletto once I go around these corners. And I'm just gonna go really, really slow. I mean, that's, that's the biggest piece of advice here is just go slow. So we're gonna sew the zipper tape in place, starting at our marked line up here, a quarter of an inch all the way around, and we're gonna stop right when we get to the folded piece of material over on the other side. what do you think? How did it go? I know those are really sharp corners, but if you go slow, it's not that bad. So now we're gonna attach the other zipper tape to the other side. Now remember, our zipper tape is super long here, so we are, this should be 
not that big of a struggle. The biggest thing you want to remember here is not to let the zipper start twisting around on itself because then it's going to be a mess. So just make sure you straighten out your zipper tape really well. So I just straighten out over here and then you're going to take your other edge of your zipper tape and you're going to wrap it around, keeping it straight. And we're going to come over here to the top right and that mark on the back of our zipper tape, we're going to line up that mark with the top mark that's a quarter of an inch from the other edge of our spine, right? So we've already got this one here. So these pieces here are gonna go over each other, that's fine. So mark up those edges together. Remember the zipper tape should be right side down against the right side of the exterior. And now we're just going to clip or tape our zipper tape to the other edge all the way around. And we're gonna do this just the same way we did on the bottom. Once we get to those corners, you might want to clip into your zipper tape just a little bit, just three or four clips, an eighth of an inch in, just enough to help it spread while it goes around the corner. Okay, and once again, I'm just clipping up to the fold in the material. There we go. And this time I'm gonna start where that fold is. So once again, I'm just making sure I start right where the material folds, and I'm gonna sew at a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around once again, using my stiletto, and just going very slow around these sharp corners and then I'll stop once I get to the marked line. I do backstitch at the beginning and the end of this. You might wanna just double check and make sure your zipper tape is nice and straight, everything looks good, there we go. Look how it's all coming together. It's looking really good. Those corners seem to go pretty well. Now you're gonna grab your liner and you're gonna lay it right side down on top of the exterior. And here's the thing, the folded edge here of the liner needs to come with the folded edge on the exterior. So I have to flip mine around just like this. There we go. So you see over here on the left, this is where I have my spine that folds over the exterior and then I have my lining here folded over and we top stitch that. Those need to be in the same spot right over there on the left side. So now over here on the right where our zipper ends are, we just tuck them in. We're not gonna sew over this piece right here at all. So you shouldn't have to worry about that. But you do wanna line up those midpoint marks on your exterior and your liner. So let's line up all four midpoint marks first even though we're not going to be sewing over the midpoints on either of the long edges. But lining up the midpoints is just gonna make sure that getting this all together nicely is, is easier. Okay, once you have the midpoints together, let's just clip all of the edges together. Now these corners here where the zipper tape is, that can be a little tricky. That zipper tape can sneak its way out of where you want it. So when we sew that area, we need to be really careful and pay attention to that zipper tape. But for now, let's just clip it and keep it out of the way. And I'm just going around clipping the right sides together, my liner and my exterior, all edges. All right, so once you have it all clipped together, flip it over so that you're looking at the wrong side of the exterior. So that would be fusible fleece or just the back of the material if you're using cork or vinyl. And over here on the bottom, so with the folded over edge on the left, on the bottom here, you're gonna leave an opening anywhere between four to six inches. I suggest six inches because this was surprisingly difficult to turn out. I don't know if it's just, I don't know what it was, but it was challenging for me to turn it out and I left a four inch hole last time. So this time I'm gonna leave a six inch hole. Closing it up is not gonna be a problem, so don't worry about leaving a hole too big and then not being able to make it look nice when you close it, you're gonna be fine. So I'm leaving a six inch hole on the bottom, I just use my ruler to measure that, centered mostly on the bottom here. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to sew just inside. So if I'm starting over here, I'm sewing just to the left of my previous stitches that's holding down my zipper tape. This is why we wanna look at the back of the exterior because the zipper tape is attached to the back of the exterior. So I can see my stitches from that, and I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna just kiss it on the left side. I'm not going a lot to the left, just, just on the left side of the stitches. That's all I can, that's all you can really say. You don't need to go right over them, just to the left of the stitches, towards the inside. And we're gonna go all the way around, but we're not going to sew over the spine on either side. So starting over here on the right, I'm just gonna backstitch here, but I'm not sewing over 
that black spine that's on the top of my bag. And I'm gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna stop at my first mark for my opening and backstitch really well because we are gonna be pulling this hole through, this hole right here. Start over here again, backstitch well, go around, stop at the spine and backstitch. And then on the other side over here, I'm just gonna sew just inside of the stitching on my zipper all the way around. So it's a little bit more than a quarter inch seam allowance, just backstitching at the beginning and the end of the spine. I know that's a lot to remember, but just if you have to make marks, make marks so you know you don't sew over the spine, you don't sew the hole in the bottom, and you're just going a little bit to the left of the stitches you already made on the zipper. When we get down to these corners here, I will be using the help of a stiletto to really shove those zipper teeth out of the way. Those zipper teeth wanna come out of the corners, and if you sew over them, then you can't shut your zipper, so just pay attention to that on the corners. Got it all sewn together. I'll be honest, this is so big, holding it up with my left hand, my left arm and shoulder and neck are hurting. So before we flip this out, one thing I wanna do real quick is reach my arm inside and I'm just gonna feel these corners. And I just wanna make sure I can feel the zipper teeth all the way around these corners. Just in case I did sew over some zipper teeth, I wanna catch that now before I turn this out so I can unpick it and fix it. So all I'm doing is just feeling and making sure the zipper teeth are not in the seam. Those all feel okay. All right, we've got it all in there. So now let's flip this whole bag out through that hole. So I like to start at one end and just pull it through. Your interfacing might be fighting you right now. If it is, I'm sorry. All righty, got most of it out. I did rip my stitches around the edge a little bit. That's okay. Once you've got most of it out though, now you can just push on those corners and poke out those corners really nicely. I know it's a crinkled mess. That is okay. We can iron this. We can clean it up. Don't worry about wrinkles. Wrinkles are not what we're worried about. Ripping the fabric or ripping the stitches too much, that's what we're worrying about. So. I know that looks messy. Don't worry about it. We will iron it. It's going to be really, really clean. So if you want, you can give your zipper a try. Just be careful. Remember, it can come off over here. We don't, we don't want that to happen. So let's just give the zipper a try real quick. If you're going to try it out. You got to kind of flip your zipper out like this. Very carefully go around. I know it needs to be ironed. That's okay. I know. Not all the way. Oh yeah, that's looking cute, isn't it? This looks so good. And this, like I said, this will be the back. This is the front. When we unzip it, so we've got to clean up the zippers, that's fine. We'll open it up and this will be how it'll be in there. That is cool. That is so cool. I think I'm gonna try it with the laptop too. Okay, let's try it with the laptop real quick. I know, it's a little quick. A little soon to do this, but oh yeah, that's a nice tight fit. Here we go. Let's open it up. Let's open it up and put our elastic around the top. And that's looking good. Close it. Just try it with the zipper. Make sure it all fits. Oh, yes it does. Careful with that raw edge you have down there. Don't close it all the way. Oh my goodness. Once you put the laptop in it, it looks so good. Doesn't that look amazing? This is fun. Okay, so pretty much we've got most of the hardest stuff done. I gotta be honest. This part is a little tricky, but it's not that, it's not tricky. I'll just, we'll go through it, we'll go through it. Okay, so just give your, give your laptop a little dress rehearsal. That looks fantastic, absolutely perfect. Love this pattern. 
All right, so now I'm gonna give this a quick press with the iron. So I'm gonna grab my ironing mat and I'm not using any steam. And I'm just gonna give this a quick press with my iron just to clean it up a bit. So you can see I'm pressing from the lining. And if you have a vinyl or a cork exterior, then you can just press through the lining and that will also help. I mean, you're not gonna have wrinkles and stuff really on the vinyl or exterior, but it will help flatten everything out really nicely. I'm just gonna get all the little wrinkles out because now we're gonna be top stitching and finishing up this awesome laptop case. I'm gonna give it a press from the front as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do down here where this opening is, you see we have this raw edge of our lining here. I'm gonna grab some double-sided tape and I'm gonna add double-sided tape to that raw edge on the right side. So just right along that raw edge because we're gonna close this hole up, we're gonna close it up while we're doing other things. So you, you, wanna, you wanna have to focus on as few things as possible right now. So let's just use some tape to help us out here. So I removed the paper. Now I'm just gonna fold down the lining and I'm folding it over so that it covers the stitching on the zipper tape. You see how I have that stitching right there? I'm, so I'm just folding it over to cover the stitching on that zipper tape. There we go. If it helps, go ahead and grab your iron and just press right around that edge as well, just to keep it there, because we don't, we don't really wanna have to think about this when we're top stitching later. Okay, before we stitch, we gotta deal with these zippers over here. So let's take a look at the edge right here with the short open side of the zipper. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna shove it inside. <laughs> you're just gonna shove it in this little hole right here. Remember we left this hole for a reason. Now, try to get the zipper teeth to kind of meet up with one another right there. Try to make sure your lining is folded down and at the same spot as your exterior. There we go. So this just takes a little bit of maneuvering with your hands. There we go. And the zipper teeth should meet in the center but be tucked in. Guys, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then just clip this together. I know it's pretty thick right here. You can uh, press this with something heavy. I know Linz likes to get a hammer out sometimes, take out some frustration. <laughs> but you just wanna get that nice and flat because we wanna make sure when we top stitch over this section right here, we're gonna top stitch over the vinyl and we're also gonna top stitch over the lining and we want everything to catch. So you just wanna make sure it's all lined up and the teeth are tucked in somewhat in the center. And now let's address the other side over here with this zipper tape. So let's unzip it a bit. And pretty much over here, it doesn't have to be really perfect. You just want the zipper tape, when you sew down over here, you don't want somehow this zipper tape to end up folded over. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kinda line up the zipper tape, tuck it in to the edge. So for example, I'm looking at like the left side going down I'm gonna tuck in that zipper tape just like that. So when I sew up to this point, I don't have to worry about it. And it doesn't have to go far, because when we start stitching, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start a quarter of an inch up from the edge of our spine. So you're gonna go over some of these little top stitching marks you already made over here on the left side, but just about a quarter of an inch up, and then you're gonna go down. So the big thing is, is when you start with the needle down here, you don't want your zipper tape out here. You want your zipper tape tucked in like it should be with the rest, right? You want it to look like it was all done at the same time. And make sure you fold up that lining too so that everything is in the same spot. I know there's a lot of things to think about here. So I'm gonna use a clip here to help with this. There we go. So we're gonna start a quarter of an inch up from the top edge here and we're gonna try to make sure we go through the spine also through the zipper tape and also through the lining, making sure the zipper tape is nice and flush with the edge, just like it was all done in one go. And what we're gonna do is we're going to just top stitch around the entire edge of our case. So we're gonna go down toward this edge over here. Once we get to the other end of the spine, we're closing off the zipper ends and we're stitching through the spine, the exterior and the lining. Go slow, be careful with your needle if you have really thick material here. And then we're gonna go around the other edge making sure we're closing up this hole down here. I know it's already come undone, hasn't it? So I'm gonna add some clips here because my tape is the wash away tape and it's not really strong. So 
For me, the one thing I just want to make sure of is that the stitching is covered by the material. I don't want that stitching to show on the interior of the case. If it does, it's okay, but it's not preferable. So I'm just gonna add clips here to remind me that when I get to this section, I need to pay attention to that. And then we're gonna go all the way around. Once we get to the other end over here, we'll move this zipper tape out of the way. And once again, I'll just line up this edge parallel. I'll show you at the machine. Let's just, let's just start. So I will be honest, top stitching around these corners with a zipper foot is one of the things that I am very bad at. <laughs> I have a very hard time top stitching around corners with a zipper foot. So those look pretty rough, which is why I use thread that is about the same color as the material. It's one of those things that when you're doing it, that's all you can see is how not perfect that top stitching looks. Uh, but after you are done and you use it and you gift it, I promise you that's not something that other people would notice and you will probably forget about it as well. Top stitching is just, it's difficult for everybody, even the pros. So as you can see, I have my tails left over here by the long edge of the zipper tape. So I'm just going to triple knot these and clean them up. Once you have them knotted really nicely, trim them as close as you can to the knot. And then you can grab a lighter to help just burn off the edges. All right, and of course, my whole unit is wrinkly again. <laughs> so I'll give it one press when I'm all done. But for now, we're good. Let's go check where we have the open edge. The open edge looks pretty good. I think that that is fine. Okay, now we need to deal with this zipper tail over here. It is very long. You see that? It's very, very long. And what we wanna do is take off the clip that's on the end of it. And we wanna tuck it in to this hole that we still have right here, okay? It should be just big enough for you to take the zipper end and tuck it in as far as you can get it, okay? So I'm just pushing in the end of my zipper tape. Now my zipper tape is quite a bit longer than I think it needs to be. Maybe I mismeasured it somehow but you actually wanna push it in a lot further than you think you do. So you get to a point where you're like, well, that's as far as it can go. You wanna push it in a lot further than that. Like really far. This is when a turning tool kind of comes in handy. You can kind of grip it and push it in because let's give it a dry run real quick. Let's fold the whole unit in half and kind of pinch up here and close your zipper. So watch, once you close it, so you see, you see this little nub right here? We don't want that. We want that tucked in as much as possible. So that only happens by over pushing it in. See how it kind of swirls out? We don't like that. So let's open it back up and you just gotta really push the tape in there. If you pull it up on its side like this, it's easier. Okay, and so now, again, I'm kind of holding it. Let's give it another run. All right, we still have a bit here. I'm try to push that in. It's hard to do. It's hard to get it perfectly flush, especially once you have it open. So, open it up some more, as far as we can get it in there. Okay, that looks pretty good like that. So now we're gonna open this gently and if you have to push your zipper pull inside a little bit there you go like that see so i can't even see 
the actual zipper part of my zipper pull, I just see the little dangle here because it's pushed in there, which is what I want. There we go. And now I'll keep it nice and tight. And make sure you can feel those zipper teeth underneath the spine here. That's where this comes in handy. We want, we want the zipper tape to be down the middle of this here. There we go. Okay. So I can feel the zipper tape in here. It's down the middle. Because what we're going to do is we're going to actually sew over that zipper tape that's inside of here when we put the handle on, which is what's going to hold it in place. It's brilliant, isn't it? I love it. So on the wrong side of the webbing, I measured in four inches in from the short edges. And now we're going to fold these short edges wrong sides together. So just whatever side is the back of your webbing, just like that. Now we're going to use some double sided tape to help here. So I'm going to cut off a piece of double sided tape and I'm going to just lay it right along the center. And this is within the area that's going to be folded over. Remove the tape and fold this wrong sides together, just like that. Go ahead and do the same with the other side. All right. So now we're just going to add this to our bag. So we're going to measure in just nice and tucked in. Everything's tucked in. We're going to measure in two inches from each side. And that's where we're going to put our carrying case. I'm going to grab a small ruler and measure in two inches from the left side. Make a mark with my vinyl marker. I'm going to grab another piece of tape, just a small one. And I'm going to put it on the bottom side that has the fold over, just centered on there. And then lay this so that that fold over is down and it's centered on this top accent piece. And the folded part is coming right up to our mark. We can even just slightly cover it. So I'm just going to do one side at a time. So I'm going to start with this left side over here. And once again, I'm kind of feeling around because I can feel, yep, I can feel that zipper tape from this side over here. I can feel it underneath there, which is what I want because I want to sew over it. And now we're just going to sew a little box with an X through it. So I can see the raw edge here from my webbing. I'm going to start about an eighth of an inch away from there. I'm going to sew a little eighth of an inch box around all four corners right here on this little two inch fold over. And then I'm just going to mark an X right through it just to really enforce this. Okay. One of those is done. Let's flip this over. And from the back again, we're just going to pull those top threads to the back and we're going to tie them and burn them just like we have been doing. It's just a clean finish to this. All right, there we go. We've got one end done. We're just going to repeat that with the other side. So on this side over here on the right, I'm going to measure in once again, two inches and I'm doing my best to center this on the spine. It's pretty easy to do. Again, I'm going to use my double sided tape because it is very helpful. And you'll notice this does not reach all the way to the edge. It's not supposed to, it's supposed to kind of go up a little bit, right? Because it is a handle. It's not, a, it's not a really long handle, but it is a handle. So let's put a piece of double sided tape on the back of that folded over side. So remember we have that two inch fold over here and then let's just center it and put it right here on the spine. There we go. And once again, we're just going to make a little box and an X through this side. And just like I did previously, I will pull all the threads to the back and tie them off. All right. And I'm going to give this one last press because it is too cool to be wrinkly. So I'm just going to go over it one more time. Now that I know I'm done mushing it around, it is ready for use. Isn't this so cool though? Oh my gosh. And this fabric looks so good. So let's see, let's flip it. So these down here go on the bottom of the laptop. Let's put the laptop in here. So I'm going to open it up just a little bit, slide the bottom into those corners and then I'll take the top, slide the screen part under the elastic. Look at that. And then fold the whole thing up. You might have to kind of finagle it when you first put it in there. Okay. Moment of truth. Let's pull on this zipper and make sure the zipper tape doesn't come out. Oh, it doesn't. Yay. Oh, look at that nice clean edge right there. Doesn't that look great? Ooh -wee, this looks good. And this is not a super thin laptop. This is a thicker laptop and it looks really good. Holy guacamole. You guys, this turned out so cool. Look at that. That is awesome. This is an amazing holiday gift. This is an amazing, obviously, if you're going back to school at the end of summer, I think this is so stinking cool. Isn't that? And let's see, let's open it up. 
it does have some new techniques. I mean, there was a lot of learning that I did when I was following this pattern, which is a good thing. So let's open her up. Look at that. Doesn't that look so cool? Oh my gosh. This is such a cool, cool pattern. And this fabric is awesome. Stay tuned because I do have other projects planned with this material. I'm very excited to try out. So you can see I have a couple different sizes here, just like that. And that's what's so great about the pattern as well is that you do get to customize it to your laptop. Gotta be honest, these are getting a little heavy right now. My arms, my arms kind of hurt from holding that material up when I was sewing it. So once again, don't forget that if you can donate to St. Jude, please consider doing so. I'll have a link down below. Kids like Ethan could really use the support. A little bit goes a long way, but a lot of bit is needed for the big stuff. So everything we can do is going to be helpful. This fabric is so cool. I will have a link down below for all of the Joann's fabrics that the kids have designed. There's a lot of really beautiful, beautiful options there. Thank you as always to Linz for allowing me to use your awesome patterns in my tutorial. This is such a, such a good one. Linz always has these really unique ideas and somehow you kind of think like, what? I don't know if I can do that. And then you do it and then you just feel awesome, right? You just feel awesome that you did that. I mean, I feel pretty dang cool that these things came together like they did. And this could be fun too. You could embroider names on it. You could use heat transfer vinyl to put names on it, designs. There's just so much you can do with this. I love it. Thank you so much for sewing with me today. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.